walking that way. I know, and I was like, right? <laughs> it's all a mess. Okay. Hi, bloggers. Um, okay, so um, we need a universal signal about the bra. Um, if you can see it, go like this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not kidding. <laughs> um, I want to thank Roger for that lovely introduction. Um, a couple of years ago, I did a reading at a bookstore that had had blood, and they had to reschedule. Um, and when I came three days later to do the reading, they held it in, in the um, loading dock, basically, of this bookstore. <laughs> and the manager is leading me back to this room, and he is incredibly apologetic. He's saying, we've never had to do a reading back here before. I'm so sorry. I hope this is OK. Um, and I, of course, as the oldest child of divorced parents, am trying to tell him, like, don't worry. It's all going to be fine. I'm sure poor mom and dad still love us. <laughs> so we, we get to this room. I will never forget it. had a concrete floor with a drain in the center, it's sort of Jeffrey Dahmer-esque. <laughs> he he um, walked through the crowd, stood behind the podium, leaned into the microphone, looked at the crowd, and said, here's Jennifer Weiner, sorry about the smell. <laughs> and I, yeah, um, usually they wait till I'm done speaking before they say that. So. But it was really awesome. Everybody who, who came, I signed their books, thanks for coming, sorry about the smell. So I, I'm thrilled to be here. And um, I, I want to start by saying, I you know I'm kind of a um, slightly freakish choice for this presentation. Um, well, I have been happily published by Atria Books, a division of Simon & Schuster, for 12 years in 10 books. I am not a publisher, although I am happy to try to make shit up if you want to ask about it. <laughs> <laughs> My publisher is actually here somewhere. I hope she makes stuff up. No. Um, yes. While I have been blogging since 2002, um, I'm not exactly the kind of book blogger that most of you guys are. Um, my blog is as likely to talk about The Bachelor as it is about publishing. So why me? Who am I and why am I here? I think that what I bring to the table this morning is my own success in the world of social media. I think that I figured out a way to um, use my blog and Facebook and Twitter and maybe Pinterest to have a conversation with my readers to find my own personal line between the share and the overshare, and not merely deliver a buy my book monologue. Yeah. So, let me take you back to 2000, when I sold my first book, lo these many years ago. Um, there was no such thing as social media. Stephen King's Eve novella, Riding the Bullet, which I remember downloading for 99 cents, reading at my desktop, and hoping my boss at the newspaper would <laughs> see me, was presumed to be the future of ebooks and there were only the most primitive e-readers available. Websites, weblogs, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Kindles, Nooks, and iPads, all of these have emerged in the last decade and um, have left publishers and authors um, scrambling to figure out how to use them, how to use these new technologies to connect books to readers. So I want to start with the good news. There has never been a more exciting time to be part of the conversation about books and reading than there is right now. Once upon a time, when I was young, there was no conversation at all. There was instead a series of overlapping monologues with critics, authors, and readers, each in their separate spheres. The critics would issue their edicts from on high. That's God. <laughs> It's old school God. I looked for black female God, but couldn't find her on Google Images. <laughs> um, readers would discuss the books in real life and usually in private. And that, wait, that's my mom's book club right there. Notice what they're not reading. <laughs> Fuckers. <laughs> when I went on my first book tour, I took my mom with me, as you do. And we're good with the bra, Megan? The bra's good? Okay, thank you. Um, so I took my mom, and I'd be in the bookstores, like, talking to the owners and talking to the clerks and being all nice and pleasant and, you know, like, trying to make a good impression. And I would hear my mom, who is super friendly, talking to other bookstore patrons, and she'd say, I just read the best book. <laughs> and I'd be like, okay, here it goes. And she'd be like, it had everything. Oh, my God, great characters, this amazing plot, and it was funny. 
and it was moving, and I think, here it comes. And I would turn around just in time to hear her say, Richard Russo's Independence Ball, have you read it? It is great! I was like, Fran, okay, no, no, no. Unless we find out that Mrs. Russo is in Maine, hand-selling copies of Good in Bed, you can't do this shit to me. So, critics talk to readers, readers talk to each other, and authors well, presumably authors were voiceless and silent between books, holed up in their garrets in New Hampshire compounds, working on their next opus. That's J.D. Salinger drinking his own urine. <laughs> he did that. That's why I read that. Um, okay, so aside from a letter to the editor, a book tour, a greeting, a visit to a book club, or if you were Richard Ford spitting on a critic at a party, <laughs> authors, I, I couldn't find a picture of that, I tried. Um, <laughs> authors really did not have an avenue for interacting with their critics or their readers. If an author had something to say, she'd say it in her next book. We have three separate spheres. Critics, authors, and readers. All of them were talking. None of them could talk to each other. So, sad Venn diagram, please. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my assistant, Megan Burnett, did the sad Venn diagram. That's, that's Megan, and thank you for that. Um, neither of us are artistically inclined. We do our best. Okay.